So as you can see, your feet are on three sides, so this is help for rest theater. So there, they will be, the actors and the ensemble members are going to be moving all around you a lot of the time. So I hope, so I hope that's okay. They are, there's sanitizer at every station and we've all got our masks. So um, it's just cool to be doing theater again in a space. Um, I'm Kara Sullivan, the director of theater, and I don't know if Mike's here. Mike is our technical director. He's not here. He's out here right now, um, and I also want to, I just before I begin, I want to just make a couple announcements. I want to let you know that there are two acts, and there's an intermission in between, so you can purchase some snacks and take a mask break if you need to, even though I hear it's really, really cold outside. Um, I want to give a big thank you to the POPS organization, the Parents of Performing Students. It's such a great organization for us, and they help us so much. So thank you uh, to everybody from POPS who helps us, and all of you, and um, also, Cambridge Trust, who is our sponsor this year. I want to give a big shout out to Cambridge Trust. Um, many people have helped in, the, in making this production so magical. The cast, the crew. You're going to see this is a really creative, different kind of theater that I'm used to. This is kind of my jam, and so I'm so happy to have finally done this, and it feels so good. I love this play. It's my favorite. Um, I couldn't have shared it with a better cast and crew. I want to give a big thank you to Sophie Cote, who has helped me as a stage manager keep all of my ducks in a row and make sure I was always doing <laughs> And I want to thank my student director, Liney, Caroline Mack, who is going to go off on her own and be a director someday. I just feel it. I know it. She has offered so many I think theater is not about just cranking out actors, but it's also people that know life lessons and have empathy and can see things from a different lens and can recognize wonderful text and can be in other people's shoes and thrive. And so that's the joy that theater brings to me, to see people out and doing those things, not just always being on stage, it's everything else as well. Um, the plot line is, can be a little confusing because this is almost written, it's almost written in verse. The language is difficult. These ladies and our guy have memorized tons and tons of text. You're going to be surprised. And our ensemble members have memorized tons and tons of blocking. So it's just amazing what they put into this. And so as I mentioned in the director's note, the ladies who think they're traveling through uncharted land end up traveling into the future. And so that is what's happening in On the Verge. So I do hope that you enjoy the show. And without further ado, on you go. Let's go.
Beach. Island or continent? Isthmus or archipelago? Beach. Narrow ribbon? Cliff face. Sheer. Beyond. Up and over? Unbearable anticipation. Mysterious interior. We have reached our embarcadero. Into the unknown. 1888. The last undiscovered, unexplored bit of globe. The sudden force of circumstance. An inheritance? Money and time, time and money. Grover said. Mandate from the Boston Geo. Go! We find ourselves. Up against it. In the antipodes. Latitude 15 degrees south. Of the equator. Longitude 125 degrees west. Of Greenwich. Somewhere east of Australia and west of Peru. Tropics. Should be good anchovy fishing. Boys. On the break. On the beach. On the verge. Set to trek. Trekking and terra incognita. Terra incognita! <laughs> Moments that would have vanished without a trace across 
much light is here. It's not stolen. It is illuminated. Mysticism. Science. Yes. That's not science, dear. That's engineering. No, Alexandra, we must have something the Boston Geo can lay hands on. You carry what you collect. Physical evidence, not imagery. Objectivity. Not poetry, not romance, my dears. You know what I'm saying. Hmm. Shall we settle up? Is 
only thing for fungi sticks. A good stiff petticoat is worth its weight in gold. Ha! Trousers in the tropics. Jungle. In the Himalayas, trousers are critical. Um, Marvelous strange oats, Alexandra. These spiky swamp stickers are a flower. They 
Shall we palaver? He sees us. I once traded 12 calico blouses to the Maasai and wrist sleeves. What did you trade them for? My life. My knuckles and shoot nails, dear. And a sigh, sigh. When worn by a brawny warrior with nothing but a necklace of leopard tails and red paint, the calico blouse is really quite fetching. I should think so. I once encountered the Maasai. I said, wow. Wow! Wow! How did they reply? He's a virgin. They seem to like that. Let's set tea. I'll change. What a word native. Assuming that it is a native. I guess everyone's native of somewhere when you think about it. So, I presume he's a native of that. Where are you a native, Mary? I haven't a thing to wear. I wish I could wash. Oh, what is life without a loofah? In Kuala Lumpur, the seraglio of the Sultan was a honeycomb. It was as many chambered as the heart of a tribe. I recall the cavernous steam rooms on cold evenings full of echoing voices and escarpments of mist. The inlaid geometric gold leaf calligraphy, the rat and sofas, the acres of tile, the color of sky, and the sponge conjured from the exoskeleton of an indigenous fruit, the lufa. 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 Now there's a word to conjure with powerful ginger. More deep breath? Oh, thank you so much. Another cup of tea. No, thank you. My kidneys are good. Yeah. Are you a native? Sorry? If you don't mind, I ask it. No. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Bismarck. Please, call me Alphonse. Alphonse. If you don't mind my saying so, you sound a trifle German. Alphonse Lorraine? Fascinating. Is Alphonse Lorraine French or German these days? Good question. Germany is destiny, ladies. That's good. I'll make a note of it. Alphonse. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Sie will play? Nein, I don't have been there. How did you happen to find yourself here? I'm a native. This is not Alsace Lorraine, am I wrong? I never have been there. I am not the uh, obvious motion which way Alsace Lorraine is. Straight up in there. Why not, eh? Forgive me, but I don't follow. He was. Him. Not me. No, no, no. No, it is. No, it's a fudge. I'm falling to I am stringing. I am. As we say out in West Indian territory, what is this fellow's problem? He is not Alphonse from Alsace Lorraine. No, there was I'm too. I said at home. It's not for sure. Alphonse, therefore, my mate. It's uniform, it's syntax, it's accent, it's Occupation of has a public to spend time on each Oh, goodness. I can feel the date. Delicious. He's a cannibal! Now that's really made of shop. Nothing to be alarmed about. Cannibals are perfectly rational human beings. You are a liberal, Mary. I am an anthropologist. I travel extensively among the indigo's cannibals, but lively. Anthropophagi I tend to be sluggish, you know, but I found them no bother to me at all. Of course, you did have to keep them from eating your quarters. Frequent head counts for the order of the day. There are two sorts of people in the world. The sort you eat with and the sort you drink with. Cannibals you drink with. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, a freebase. Or, rather, the rest of Alphonse is a freebase. Excuse me, ladies, I've been a moment a little confused. So soon after the talk. What else do you know about your about Alphonse? He was a pilot. A riverboat? Nein, nein, nein. He flew. Then I was a date place, please. And cream shit. Cool stuff is cream shit. You were saying, Alphonse? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yes. I'm just saying. I was 
give us 12 years now before our pilot. We were flying fishing. Nonsense. Long, you might look. Heavier than an app, a dirigible. A dirigible. Not dirigible. A dirigible? Dirigible? Dirigible, you are dirigible. What is a dirigible, Alphonse? What a succulent word. Dirigible, 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 dirigible. Alex. Up your old dirigible. Give me your huddle dirigible. Journey to breathe free air. Have a dirigible on leaving, fellow. One minute dirigible to go. Well, it's a balloon. Another? Another. Eligible dirigible, eligible dirigible, incorrigible dirigible, gerbil, in a dirigible, I wager it's one of those words that no not in English. It's not an English word at all, is it? Alex, we must discuss your preoccupation with rhyme. I have read that preoccupation with rhyme is one of the symptoms of incipient hysteria. Not first! What happened to the dirigible, Alphonse? Still that was I. You might have looked here at it. You start out growing impertinent. Say, that's a nice baby about that. My sister has a big leg like Does she like it? She loves it. A lot. How do we locate your dirigible Alphonse? What would they like? Yellow bit more, sweeties. Sorry. Take your set and mix it. Much for the their boom the shave size. Mm. Oh boy. I should never have taken a nice slice of tape, but never eat on a bush moment. Alphonse. Excuse me, ladies. Thank you for the time. You must have eaten this in the end, we have many manoc school. Maniac, my favorite. Have you had many up fritters? We will have to say this. Alphonse, couldn't you see your white fritters to guide us to the dirigible? We'll pay wages. Oh, there it is. Why not? Uh, ask me to get my blue wages. Via Condeos. Oh, read it then. I'm talking about my shit. Big you? Love that thing. Esteem indeed. I've already got one. Oh, thank you. I will keep it with me always. A cannibal from Alsace Lorraine. The wonders never cease. Yes, Mary. There are two types of people in the world. There are cannibals, and there are lunch. Fanny, you are a social Darwinist. What do you suppose he meant by Burma? I've been to Burma, as have I. There are no cannibals in Tibet, no matter what the Red Chinese say. What on earth is a red Chinese? Pharmacist. 
<laughs> Did your father yodel there? No. He and I did a tommy for guitar. After an hour, the ropes would be dry as toast and neatly pressed. They would concentrate. I went and peppered them aside. I said, wow! Talking drums always bring up the Neolithic. Dear Grover, we had lunch today, or was it yesterday, with the most amicable cannibal. He admired my wig. The tabloids will feast. I can hear the globetrotteress licking her chops now. Fanny's cannibal discovers man-eating balloonists in darkest antipodes. Boston Geo views claim warily. The jaundice of yellow journalism. One more card in the catalog my critics are fond of calling Fanny's Follies. Terra incognita exhilarates, intoxicates. There is a certain hallucinatory spiciness to the air. We are in the grip of a communal fever dream. Alex mutters continuously about the red Chinese, and Mary makes reference to an anthropological penny dreadful entitled The Naked and the Dead. Myself, I dream about mysterious machinery, discover strange objects in my baggage, and strange phrases in my mouth. Air mail, blue sky ventures. So long.
evening in the Lucasfan near dusk, I slipped off solid ground and found myself sinking into infinite bog. Fortunately, my sturdy skirt ballooned around me and held its shape until assistance arrived. A few minutes later, I lost half a dozen quarters in the blink of an eye. So under the sands like that. Poor men were wearing skirts.
yawning chasm, an antediluvian suspension.
Victor Herbert quakes? A little more back in the day, it was. He called it a chocolate? Loud. The future is loud!
It is entering into our consciousness like mustard gas, whatever that is. <laughs> Wait a moment. I'll tell you. Oh. 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 Unfortunate simile. I withdraw it. <laughs> we are absorbing the future through osmosis. While you're at it, I'll spell direct Chinese for us. I'll, I'll try. Mm, uh, like a radio transmission. Don't ask. Mm, yes? A little red book, great leap forward, swimming in the Yangtze River. Tractor operas. Operas about tractors? Um, running dogs and... They're friends with Nixon! <laughs> Ladies, this is fantastic! I presume you are feeling with me slightly tremulous, a bit fluttering around the gills. Oh, ladies, I don't know about you, but I am experiencing a definite, a palpable yearning for the future. Oh, Mary, uh, radio is, radio is voices on the air! Uh, sounds voodoo. You just have to osmos your own description. We are imbued with the future. One doesn't have to like it. Nostalgia for the future. I shall make my fortune in radio. So go from year to year as I'm going from tribe to tribe. It's big fun. Okay. It's another button. So we'll similar to the one we found our first day on the beach. Heck, what aunt? Once could be a fluke, twice is a trend. What does it read? I like Ike. Who's Ike? <laughs> You know, ladies, all of a sudden I have a sudden craving, a, a burning desire, an intense, painful longing for something called Cool Whip. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, 